everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. So welcome to Scalemates. Yes, um, let's have a quick look. And basically this is where I get all my info for the build. As in what's in the box, as in decals, um, the actual kit itself, if there's any reviews on it. And also you can download the actual instructions themselves. And also if there's any aftermarkets you so wish to have. So with the instructions, they are Eddard's normal um, Profi Pack instructions. Very comprehensive, very, very good. Uh, call outs and basically placement of the actual parts are very, very clear. Decal option wise, you do get a few as it's a profi pack. So just feast your eyes on these. That's the one I'm doing. And yes, they are very, very nice. And yeah, if you look, you can practically get any decal option for any Mustang that ever flew. So with the box art then, yes, I do love that box art. It's very, very nice. Anyway, on the side of the box, you do get a sort of like a recap of what actual decal options you do have. And yes, it's the Duxford Bird, which I am doing. So when you lift that box lid off, what do you get? Do you get a scabby old dog? No, you don't. You get a rather lovely kit inside. Um, several sprues. Um, that one's sort of like main pack together. You've got your main wings in a separate bag. Why? I'm not sure. Some instructions, some clear bits, and some stickers, and some metally bits, and some masks at the bottom. So yes, very nice. Anyway, onto the kit, or basically building it. Um, this video is basically just going through the cockpit and putting the two fuselage halves together. That is it. The rest of the kit build will be on separate videos, believe it or not. But anyway, they are pretty comprehensive, like I said before and very, very well detailed. So basically it is a question of just taking your time, taking the bits off the sprues and looking with instructions and actually popping it in. Now, basically as a rule, what I do, I take all the parts off that are needed for the actual uh, fuselage, seats, side consoles, instrument panels, etc. Get them all glued in, glued up or what I can glue, and then I can actually paint it. So yeah, I'll leave you to it and this is what I do. Okay then, with pretty much everything uh, actually all glued in and all ready to go, we can really go straight into uh, the priming. Now, the primer I use is normally just a sort of like a Tami or acrylic, a grey of some description. And yeah, just doing a light coat, quite heavily thinned, uh, just to stop that build up of dry paint, um, giving you that sort of like rough 
texture. So once that was done, I was using AK's uh, Extreme Metals, the aluminium, and basically, well, spraying it where it needs to be. Now, I would normally leave this quite a few hours to actually dry off, uh, at least, yeah, two to three hours, but it was a steaming hot day, again, in the UK, which is quite uncommon. So it dried pretty, pretty quick. So once that was done, I could mask over and basically paint the rest, as in the interior green. And just there, what I'm doing now is I'm using a deck tan, which is going to be part of the wooding flooring. And more of that in a mo. For the actual main uh, cockpit paint, I use Hataka's interior green or for the, the USAF uh, interior green. Um, that went down really, really well. And it's just a case of, you know, sort of like doing it lighter bits there and more heavier bits here, just to give that sort of like a different contrast of actual color and some shadowing. So with the rear undercarriage bay um, painted in zinc chromite yellow, it was now on to more of the detail painting, as in the oxygen hoses, uh, different um, pieces of equipment or for the instruments on the side consoles only on this one, where I used a, a, a black gray for the actual instrument or the panels themselves. But once that was done, it was time for a bit of the old dry brushing and this I live by because it really does bring out all them sort of like raised parts and actually gives it a major definition, sort of like brings it to actual life itself. Again, once you're happy with it, just stop and, and go from there. The more you do it, the more, you know, it could look unrealistic as it were. So yeah, once you've done it, yeah, yeah I'm happy with that. Pop it down and leave it be. So, dark wash time. Yes, let's bring this thing a bit more to life. And yes, it is a question of just using a sort of long bristle brush and you're just tapping it all over, getting into all the nooks and crannies. And once you're happy with that, yeah, you can just take it off again. And how do you do that? Well, I'll just get a loaded brush um, with some thinners, pop it into a paper towel, get most of the thinners off, and then just go around dabbing all around the place itself and yeah just taking off what i want and that's it once you're happy with it stop and reflect if you need to do it again do it again it's entirely up to yourself And at this point, I would just like to thank you for all your uh, support over the time. And if you could, which would be awesome, is to like the video. And if you can, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And click on that old bell button to get uh, notifications of future videos. Okay then, so next up is doing some wood. We were 
Right, some oil paint first of all, and basically I'm just putting a tiny, tiny amount on a sort of like a weathering uh, brush and just applying it to where I've painted um, the deck tan on the floor of the cockpit. So once you've got it on the actual brush itself, just take a little bit more off if you so wish, and then in one direction, just apply the actual oil itself. Now, when you start off with this, it, it will look an absolute mess. And you think, Lenny, what have you made me do now, you asshole? Um, no, basically it's a question of just applying it and putting it down into sort of like one direction. Now, once you're happy with what's actually on there, as in the amount, you can go for some, I don't know, some thinners of your choosing and just basically very, very gently just maneuver it so you've got that streak in fact that eventually will look like the grain of the wood so once you've done it on that one and i used the sepia for this one and now i'm using a rust color just to actually add a bit more of a contrast between the actual um yeah the grains of the wood so again you can just pop it on and with a brush that's been soaked in thinners all you can do now is to brush down in the same direction but yeah give it a bit of a twist give it a bit of a sort of like a I don't know a bit of a circle circular brush type thing just so you can get that sort of like that bend within the actual um, grain itself and once it's done and finished hopefully you'll end up with something yeah that looks like a bit of wood so yeah <sighs> anyway if you do put too much on though however you can use a cotton bud and just take off what you want rather than sort of like absolutely chucking all your sort of like thinners on it you can just roll the actual cotton bud and take it away so again once you've done that you can go back and do some more graining so yeah it's as simple as that and once you're happy with it just leave it so yeah am i happy with that uh yeah sort of uh i did go back to it and do a little bit more because i did think that was a bit too much oh yeah and there's the result <sighs> anyway there you go that's the wood who uh so before i put on the actual photo etch belts and harnesses and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted to sort of like distress the actual seat first. And basically what I didn't do, what I forgot to do, was to put some scratch effects actually on the seat because I painted it all um, silver underneath. So basically what I'm doing is I've just sort of like tried to rehydrate the actual paint itself and start stabbing it with a old um, airbrush uh, needle. So with that, I applied a little bit more water just to try and get it sort of like you know the paint going a bit more and uh and yeah i got the uh well yeah i got the the desired effect although it's very very subtle and you would have to sort of like strain your eyes to actually look at it so next time i would use some of the actual um chipping fluid to actually get the this effect With the seat done then it's uh, time for the harnesses and basically all i've done is to take it off the photo etch fret um, put some super glue on one part of the seat where the well where the the buckle would be and yeah just leave it to dry for a few seconds and away you go and you can just apply the rest of the harnesses um yeah according to the instructions So with the rest of the photo etch parts that was going to go on to the side uh, of the fuselage, they've all been done in exactly the same way. A little spot of super glue and, and basically, yeah, just stuck on. And yeah, 
really, really happy with the way we've gone out. Um, the radio uh, stack has all been put on as per the instructions. And yeah, it's just the, the steering column left to put on. So when you are attaching the uh, cockpit sides, uh, sorry, the cockpit to the side of the fuselage, just make sure it is in the right place and basically apply the glue. And what I was doing there was just wiggling it about like a good old todger and uh, and yeah just making sure all the glue was actually where it was supposed to be so it's now together and it went together really really well um i've basically tried to glue it all together um as carefully as i possibly can because i want to try and get minimal cleanup on this because it is going to be a bit of a bugger painting it and not getting the seam line actually being seen okay because it's all going to be metal so thanks for watching see you soon